Uh, once again, we'll take questions here in person and then transition to Zoom. So let's begin. Uh, we'll go with Katya. Hi, Steve. Hi. What did you see from the team, that patience in the first half when the moments of the game perhaps weren't going in your guys' way and then capitalizing on the opponent's mistakes in the second half? More of the same. So you know, before the, this tournament, we had an opportunity um, you know, to get the players in training um, sessions, uh, multiple training sessions, where we can work with them and try to get back to our old uh, habits, behaviors, principles of play. And so um, you know, that was helpful. And we're seeing that. We saw that the other night um, against Juarez. And again tonight, um, and yes, you spoke about being patient ourselves. It's up to you to write down a team full of confidence at the moment. Um, and I was quite happy with the way we approached the second half after the beginning of the game. Uh, sorry to check back. The beginning of the game was very good. I thought we put enough effort into it to deserve a goal. We didn't, but to remain calm, um, give the half a 0 zero, and then to come out with the same intensity and attitude in the second half uh, was, was a great sign. Um, it's always a great sign uh, of belief that that's the right way to play, and that the players um, um, have internalized that and apply that in game situations. So it's um, it was fun to watch. Hi, coach. Uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, LXC has long been known as a second half team, especially in the last season on the run to MLS Cup and Supporter Shield. It feels like. You're getting back to that now with two with nine goals in the second half of the past two games. Is there something that the team has done overall that has helped that, or specifically tonight, uh, to change things in the second half? No, I think that has more to do with the opponent than it does us. Um, I think there's these last two opponents were battling fatigue, both played in, in previous rounds, so I and traveled. So I think that has more to do with the opponent than it does us. Go with. Uh... Uh, your thoughts on Monterey and Rose Bowl? Um, yeah. Big stadium. <laughs> uh, no parking. <laughs> usually really hot. <laughs> that was my thoughts at the Rose Bowl. Um, it's a cool venue. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll get uh, a lot of fans out. Hopefully more for black and gold. Uh, but Monterey is a top, top team. But... Uh, no weaknesses. It's, it's just a very well balanced team, very hard team to beat. Um, um, also, you know, for me, not a typical um, <coughs> Liga MX team. It's, it's a team who you can place in a European league and wouldn't look out of place. Uh, they're big, they're strong, they're physical, they're fast, they can play vertical, they can play slow, they can combine. They have some, some finishers and some excellent defenders. So. So just a very complete team, a very mature team, and a really hard team to beat. But um, this is why we're playing this tournament um, to see these type of matchups, and we're uh, looking forward to it. So we'll do our best to recover and to get um, some fresh legs on the field Friday night. Okay. Steve, I had a follow-up. Mm -hmm. Can you speak on Denise's impact and what he keeps doing? Like five goals in, in two games, and just being that leader for the offense. Is that more than Messi? No, Less games though, so if you go by game, it is. Um, yeah, look, attackers are there to score or to set up other players on the field. And if it's not Denise scoring, and if he's attracting one or two defenders to open up and free up other attackers, um, fantastic. So, yeah, Denise went on a dry spell for a little bit, um, um, like everybody else, um, before the break. And uh, it's nice to see that he's back, refreshed, scoring goals, um, and being effective for LAFC. And more important to me, um, I see him on a daily basis on the training pitch and, and in the games. So he's got a smile on his face and he's enjoying the game again. And that's really important um, for a player like to me and then the rest of us as well. So yeah, his impact is, uh, is, is uh, short-term fantastic, uh, but also long-term for LAFC. And, um, love to clone them and, and put a couple more up on the field, but uh, with our rules and regulations in this league, it's not possible, so. That's why it's not possible. Yeah. It's the only reason. There's other Denise out there. Um, do you have any idea about Carlos' availability for Monterey? And would you share it with us? And 
the kids, or dads, and now Chris Dubs scoring some thoughts on their performance as well? Um, no, I, I don't. I don't have an update for you, Carlos. Um, we'll try to. We'll do our best um, to give you more information on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but he wasn't available tonight, and so um, hopefully we'll give you better news uh, tomorrow or on, on Thursday. Um, we just don't know. So anything further than that would be would be a lie. So um, yeah, Nathan had a, had a good game tonight. Uh, was energetic, got a goal, which is always good. Um, had, had bright moments, um, but also moments where you can see he's really young and still needs work. Um, but, Everybody can see the moments where there's a lot of potential there. And uh, we'll continue to work with Nathan and hopefully get him more minutes. Um, the further you get on the tournament, the more difficult it will become, but um, he has a bright future. And, you know, Philip has had a good start with us, been a couple of days in training. And uh, to get going on his debut is excellent. Um, I think what you're going to see out of Philip is uh, technically a very, very proficient player and consistent player at that age, which is not common. Um, he doesn't make very many mistakes in the ball. Um, he has a fantastic strike and pass, and we saw glimpses of him tonight. Um, he's a smart player um, and teachable, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot of him as well. But it's really important for players when they do get their debuts on the first couple of games to uh, have a positive moment, and he did tonight. So it's, uh, it, it really gives us a path to integrate him in the squad and. Um, and to make it even better. This question? Coach, you had mentioned it was more the other team than us in the second half. Um, after that first goal, though, things kind of seemed to unravel a little bit for RSL, and we really got out on the front foot. Why do you think that really spiraled the way it did? Yeah, it's a good question. I think that has to, also has to do with us, um, the way we treat games and the way we will set teams up to open up a little bit and expose them on the counter. And I think. It's, it's quite difficult to play against us when we go up. Um, and that is something we talk about, we train, we know our habits and our principles. Um, when we apply them correctly, um, we'll hurt teams when they do try to risk things and send numbers forward and open up. Um, we can be teams on the counter. We can be teams um, who sit in the lower block. Um, so yeah, when teams do start pressing and start stepping, them up, stepping up, um, they leave themselves open and we have the tools to break that down. So it's a little bit of both um, to answer your question. And it's certainly something, it would be normal and and for the guys and psychologically uh, easy to sit back and just kind of let the game end two to zero, it's kind of over then. Um, but this team doesn't know how to slow down, which is great and it's fun to watch and it's something that uh, you know, we instill in the players on a daily basis. Let's quickly go to Zoom and take one question from John Luca. Uh, Steve, first of all, congratulations on the victory. I thought that for all the goals that you've scored, I, I thought that Diego had a man of the match performance at both ends, especially I thought his passing when he had the ball and distributing it, especially out of your own end, was good. And I thought that he really just controlled the attack that they had, but when they, the few chances that they did have when they had the ball in your area, so I, I really thought he put in an excellent shift tonight. You're right, he did, amongst others. Um, um, he was He's a, obviously coming into an age in his career where he's maturing and, and making good decisions regularly, making more good decisions than poor decisions, and um, when you do that, you're gonna find yourself uh, having good performances. So he has all the ability, physically and technically, and, and uh, you have the maturity and the experience to it, So turning into a, a, a uh, one of the best outside backs in the league, uh, which we expected him, and he expected himself. So he's confirmed that again tonight. Um, you know, I also think, um, you know, Matty Bogush in the middle is, is coming into his own as well and figuring that position out and uh, putting another really good game tonight like he did the other night. All right, thank you for the time. Thank you. For all the media in person and on Zoom, we actually